The tubular market is comprised of products that are specifically classified in ASTM and ASME as pipe and tube. Pipe and tube are manufactured and processed in similar methods and in many cases on the same process equipment. So you may be wondering, what is the difference? Both appear to be similar cylindrical hollow sections, but it is important to understand that each has its own specific characteristics which make them the best fit for different applications. Understanding these differences can help you better match the product to your application and ensures correct ordering with your supplier. Let's take an in-depth look at the similarities and disparities of pipe and tube. Hi, I'm Dan Janikowski, Technical Manager at Plymouth Tube Company. When it comes to tubular products, it's important to understand there are two general categories of products, pipe and tube. Although they look similar, they are not normally interchangeable. Pipe is defined as a vessel for pipeline and piping systems and is normally used to transport gases or fluids from one point to another. Sections of pipe might be connected to the valves, fittings, and pumps of the same standard size. One important characteristic of pipe is to note how the pipe size designations and descriptions differ from tube. Pipe uses nominal size descriptions similar to the way the lumber industry uses nominal sizing for lumber dimensions. The nominal size description is normally based on the pipe's inner diameter, or ID, and is approximate. Pipe is always round and typically produced from hot rolled steel. Tube, on the other hand, normally uses actual size descriptions which reference the tube's outside diameter or OD and wall thickness. Tube is generally used for structural purposes, heat transfer, and hydraulic application. Tubing is usually more expensive than pipe due to tighter manufacturing tolerances and enhanced performance criteria. Tube can be manufactured in different shapes such as square and rectangular and based upon product requirements can be stronger than pipe. Understanding the differences between pipe and tube as well as the requirements of your product is important to ensure that you're selecting the correct material for your application. The most important thing to know about pipe sizing is the transmission capacity or inside dimension. Pipe can accommodate broader range of sizes. Pipe diameters can range from fractional sizes to diameters that are several feet. Pipe sizes are standardized and are referred to as nominal pipe sizes abbreviated as NPS. The manufacture of nominal pipe sizes from 1 8 inch to 12 inch is based on a standardized nominal outside diameter, or OD, that is different from the actual OD, or measured OD. As Dan mentioned, pipe diameter size normally relates to the hole inside the pipe, called the inner diameter, or ID, and it uses nominal, not actual dimensions. For example, 1 inch pipe is actually 1.315 inches nominal outside diameter. Wall thickness is another important factor to consider in pipe sizing. In addition to standardizing the nominal OD, a standard wall thickness is labeled as a schedule or SCH. Common pipe schedules are Schedule 5, Schedule 10, Schedule 40, and Schedule 80. Special schedule and net wall thicknesses can be ordered for custom requirements. Pipe wall is often related to pressure it can hold. The units for both NPS and SCH are dimensionless. The higher the schedule reference number, the heavier the pipe wall thickness is, which means the pipe can withstand higher pressure. Pipe manufacturing tolerances by definition are looser than tube manufacturing tolerances, and the testing requirements in most specifications for pipe are less stringent than those for tubes. Unlike pipe, which is more readily available in standard sizes, tube is often manufactured to order. Tolerancing is often much tighter than it is with pipe and the reference dimension for manufacturing. Applications for tubing often include heat exchangers, hydraulic applications, and mechanical application. These applications may require the tubing to fit into close tolerance fittings or other applications where sizing is critical. Tube can be manufactured to the following dimensions. OD, meaning outside diameter, ID, meaning inside diameter, and wall, meaning the wall thickness. 
It is important to note that when ordering or specifying tube, a combination of only two of these variables can be specified. OD and wall, ID and wall, or ID and OD. A third dimension can be added, but it can only be used as a reference or aim target, but it is not guaranteed. The wall can be specified two ways. One method is by gauge, which is an accepted method derived from the Birmingham wire gauge, BWG. The second method is to specify net inch or metric dimension. Be sure to check the ASTM specified tolerances for manufacturing prior to ordering. If your application requires a more precise dimension than what is referenced in the ASTM tolerance, you'll need to inform your supplier of those requirements. Once these restricted tolerances are mutually agreed upon, they should be included within your order or in your custom specifications. Normal diameter ranges of tubing are between 0.125 inch ID to 12 inches OD, inclusive of all diameters and wall thickness of 0.015 to 0.320 inclusive. Custom diameters and wall thicknesses can be manufactured as long as the tube complies with all relevant tube specifications. Knowing the terminology and understanding how to measure both pipe and tube is essential in the specifying and ordering process. Pipe is always round and may be supplied with either square cut or beveled ends. Both pipe and tube can be manufactured seamless or welded. Properly manufactured pipe can be cold formed into fittings and stub ends, while tubing can be shaped, bent, or flared. Tube can be manufactured, welded to size, seamless, or welded and drawn. With additional forming equipment, tube can also be formed into various profiles and shapes. Pipe is often used to convey various types of fluids, such as water, oil, gas, propane, paint, beer, etc., from one location to another. There are exceptions. Tube can be used to convey fluids as pipe. For example, various specifications of tube are used in the manufacture and conveyance of wine, dairy, and pharmaceutical products. Tube is used for structural and mechanical purposes and are often preferred for applications that call for precise dimensions such as aircraft, hydraulic, and medical applications. Pipe can be used for mechanical application such as structural supports or heat exchanger applications such as larger diameter gas to gas heat exchanger and steam coils. In these applications, the product is almost always specified to ASME code. Both pipe and tube can be made from a variety of metals such as carbon steel, stainless steel, copper alloys, and high performance alloys. Carbon steel products are normally the lowest cost metals, while high performance alloys can be quite expensive. As pipe is commonly stocked by distributors, lead times are usually short. With more specialized requirements and an infinite availability of sizes, lead times for tube are often longer as they are custom made. Although both are mass produced, pipe standard sizes and requirements usually result in a lower cost per pound than tubing. It's worth noting that by virtue of the many commercial, specialized, and custom engineered market segments that utilize tube, their availability can range from stock commodity SKUs to long lead time specialty products, so be sure to consider lead times when ordering. Tubes can also be specified to require additional post-manufacturing processes, such as special finishes, tests, and inspections, which can result in longer lead times and higher costs. There are many uses and applications in which pipe and tube are utilized. Understanding the advantages, limitations, and differences between pipe and tube relative to dimensions, application, and cost are important in the design, ordering, and application of each, whether on the shop floor or job site.